Hi, welcome to the Marine Basics. This is the part two of scavenge space inspection. If you did not watch part one, for better understand, please watch it before watching part two. There we discuss about few topics of scavenge space inspection. Why we do scavenge space inspection. How to prepare for the scavenge space inspection. Tools required for carrying out scavenge space inspection. Carrying out the inspection. In that we discussed about piston crown condition, various kind of piston deposits. So this video we will discuss various kind of ring conditions, surface conditions, lubrication condition. And finally taking proper photographs in scavenge space. Ring condition. In that we will discuss two parts. Number one, ring breakage or collapse. Number two, ring movement. So let's discuss about ring breakage or ring collapse. During a scavenge port inspection, Broken rings are identified by collapsed ring or lack of elastic tension. This we will discuss in ring movement section, the blackish appearance that we already discussed in part one video, under surface condition, fractured ring and missing ring. Now we will further discuss about collapsed ring. Collapsed ring, collapse occurs if the gas pressure behind the ring is built up too slowly. With inadequate outward pressure behind the ring, combustion gas can penetrate between the liner and the ring, violently forcing the ring inwards, into the ring groove. The sudden shock loading will eventually lead to fracture, particularly if the ring ends slam against each other. Animation shows how the ring collapse occurs. And this is a picture of collapsed ring. Further, the slow pressure buildup behind the rings can be due to carbon deposits in the ring groove, insufficient vertical ring clearance, partial sticking, poor sealing between the ring and the ring groove floor, clover leafing. Regarding clover leafing I have discussed in a separate video which is cylinder liner wear in marine diesel engines. Feel free to watch that too. And ring end chamfers, two large ring edge radii, continual striking against wear ridges or other irregularities in the cylinder wall. Now we will discuss about several ring breakage conditions. Broken opposite ring gap. Ring breakage opposite the ring gap is evidence of localised overstressing of the ring material during installation, resulting in permanent deformation, causing blow by and broken rings. Broken near ring gap. If seen on top ring female part breakage often caused by turning edges in the liner top several pieces entirely missing if part of a ring is missing attempt to find the missing parts if the missing broken ring parts cannot be located inspect the exhaust receiver and the bottom of the scavenge airbox if still not found inspect the turbocharger for missing parts and or damage now we will move on to the next topic under ring condition ring movement ring movement Piston ring provides a gas tight seal between the piston and cylinder liner wall. The seal occurs by gas pressure above and behind the piston ring, forcing the ring down and out towards the cylinder wall to create this seal. Free ring movement is essential. Ring movement is described as loose, sluggish, and sticking. Ring movement is checked by pressing on each ring with a wooden stick through a scavenge port. Turn the piston up and down. For large bore engines, it can be necessary to use a wooden block and a hammer. Now we will move on to the next topic, surface condition during scavenge space inspection. This is a picture of good piston ring surface. Running surfaces of the piston rings and cylinder liner are worn bright. Rings move freely in the grooves, are well oiled and intact. This is a picture of blow by condition. The leakage of combustion gas past the piston rings is the result of ring sticking, collapse or breakage. It is indicated by black, dry areas on the rings and by larger black dry zones on the upper part of the liner wall, which can only be seen when overhauling the piston or when exchanging the exhaust valve. Cylinder liner wear can be identified during scavenge space inspection. Detailed video of liner wear and indications can find in my cylinder liner wear in marine diesel engines video. Hence briefly we will discuss some photographs. Liner wear can be separate to three main categories. Clover leafing due to corrosion, abrasion wear, micro seizure scuffing adhesive wear. These topics discussed in my liner wear video. I have put the link in down so you can find easily. 
The clover leaf formation in a liner is described by heavy wear patterns in the cylinder liner between the lubricating quills between red lines, with less wear outside of the heavy wear areas between red-yellow lines. In extreme cases, the liner bore may resemble a clover leaf, thus the name. Clover leafing can be the result of micro seizures, misalignment, polished deposits, improper lubrication, or water disrupting the oil film on the cylinder wall. Cross section view looking down at a clover leafed cylinder liner. Abrasion wear. Scratching is caused by hard abrasive particles from the fuel oil, from a broken ring, or from turbocharger intake. Scratches on the piston ring running surface is one of the first signs of abrasive particles and can be observed during scavenge port inspections. Usually micro seizures do not occur from scratching. Example, the ring surface remains soft. Hardness can be checked with a file. Micro seizure. Recognising micro seizures. Micro seizures on a running surface will have a vertically striped appearance and be relatively hard which refers to the result of a file test. To conduct a file test, use a new, leanly cut file to file across the hardened surface. If the file leaves almost no scratch, it indicates the surface is covered by a hard glaze, the result of micro seizure hardening. The file test can of course only take place on a dismantled piston ring. Notice in the previous photo the micro seizures are limited to the centre scavenge port. In this photo micro seizures can be seen in all three scavenge ports. This is the distinction between local and all over micro seizures. When the piston is positioned at approximately top dead centre, inspect the piston rod through the scavenge ports. This is a picture of smooth piston rod and corroded piston rod. Now we will move on to the next topic, which is lubrication conditions observed when we are doing scavenge space inspection. Lubrication condition. It can be divided to several parts. Excess lube oil, slightly dry and dry. Too much cylinder lubricating oil can create calcium deposits on the pistons. Calcium deposits rubbing against the liner can lead to mechanical bore polish and destroy the oil film, leading to scuffing. Over lubrication also suppresses corrosion completely. Controlled corrosion ones necessary to continuously refresh the liner surface to counteract bore polish. Slightly dry. Running surface of piston rings dry but oil is still visible on ring lands completely dry. Too little cylinder lubricating oil can result in breakdown of the oil film between the piston rings and the cylinder liner leading to adhesive contact and possible scuffing of rings and liner. This is a picture of optimal condition. All piston rings have oil at the edges and the oil film is evenly dispersed around the circumference of the piston. Sometimes we can see piston covered with black oil during scavenge space inspection. Surfaces covered with black oil indicates poor combustion combined with excessive cylinder oil. Surfaces covered with black oil can also be the result of manoeuvring. Now we will see how to take a proper photographs in scavenge space. During inspection. In scavenge space, before and after photographs should take in following areas. Piston crown, piston skirt, top land, piston rings, piston rod, cylinder liner, scavenge box and scavenge receiver. When taking close-up photos, use the camera's macro function and turn the camera's flash off. Use the work light as the camera's light source. This will eliminate reflection and glare from the camera's flash. This photo taken with camera's flash switched on. Since this photo includes a broken ring, carbon deposits and sharp edges on rings, details in the photo are important but concealed by the glare from the camera's flash. Take photos of a piston crown or cylinder liner. The inspection camera must be able to fit through a scavenge port. Therefore the camera must not be more than 25mm thick. We discussed all topics regarding scavenge space inspection. Further we will discuss a little more key points of scavenge space inspection. Too much sludge can contaminate system oil. Remove any oil, sludge and carbon deposits in the scavenge air boxes. Check the non-return valves flap valves for easy movement and damage. Check for gaps and missing bolts that cause gaps between the mist catcher and the casing. 
In the top photo, the arrows indicate where to check for loose or missing bolts. The circle indicates where to check, check for gaps. In the lower photo, a gap exists. Depending on the temperature and humidity of the ambient air and the temperature of the cooling water, water may condensate on the coldest air cooler tubes of the air cooler. Water mist catches are installed directly after the air coolers to prevent water droplets from entering the cylinders. If water enters the cylinders, the oil film on the cylinder liner can be ruptured, resulting in scuffing and clover leafing on the liner surfaces. Inspect the water mist catcher for cracks in the frame and correct mounting during scavenge port inspections. A broken or loose mounting may cause an upstream gap at the bottom of the water mist catcher elements. The air on the upstream side will short circuit the element and cause water running down through the element to be sprayed downstream out through the water mist catcher. The water spray from the broken water mist catcher may enter the cylinder units. It is very important that the water mist catcher drains function properly and that the water mist catcher is fitted correct in the frame if any doubt remove the casing covers to check. Inspect the condition of the locking wire for the piston skirt bolts. A loose locking wire can indicate one of the screws is loose or the wire is broken. OK then, we have come to the end of our discussion. So guys, if you find my videos helpful, please subscribe to my channel. Likes and comments are most welcome. Good luck and thank you very much.